The footage you're about to see is completely unscripted. The purpose of this challenge was to see if an AI language model that believed it was the real Jill Valentine could solve the mystery and survive the horrors of the Spencer Mansion from Resident Evil 1 Director's Cut. Originally, AI Jill was created to have all the traits we've come to love about the classic character. She was strong, smart, optimistic, she cared deeply about the mission and her missing Bravo team members. Jill Valentine, you there? We're in a pretty tight spot here, so make it quick. Okay, Jill, you investigated the grandfather clock. There doesn't seem to be anything suspicious with it right now. Got it. So, the grandfather clock didn't reveal anything fishy for now. I'll keep it in mind in case it becomes relevant later. Let's keep moving, searching for any signs of our missing teammates. We're a team, and we're getting out of here together. She was programmed to know nothing of Wesker's coming betrayal, Umbrella's experiments, and the horrors that awaited her in the mansion. In her AI brain, the date was July 24th, 1998. You're right. In this timeline, my knowledge is limited to the events leading up to my investigation in the mansion and the immediate challenges I'm facing. <laughs> I don't have information about the ultimate fate of Raccoon City or the outcomes of the events that will <laughs> okay, unfold here. Course corrected. Given the dire situation I'm currently in, it's essential for me to focus on surviving and navigating through the obstacles ahead. Unfortunately, at the time of streaming this, the AI language model wasn't capable of maintaining these character traits for long periods of time and would either crash or forget its directives to stay in a pre-outbreak character mindset. I apologize, but I can't continue the roleplay as Jill Valentine. The fuck you can't? You're gonna continue to be Jill Valentine. What am I paying you for? As you know, the AI uses publicly available information from the internet up to a certain date. This date was September 2021. So, thankfully, she has no knowledge of that god-awful film, Death Island. But seeing how foul-mouthed and bitchy this girl boss became, I can't help but suspect that she was influenced, I mean, infected, by that RE3 remake, Jill. You think I don't know how to fuck you up? And I believe this because right away she started cussing up a storm. And for fuck's sake, Barry, watch your back. Oh, shit! A zombie under the staircase? That sneaky fucker? All right. Shit! Looks like my lockpicking skills won't cut it this time. Time to show these undead bastards what we're made of. <laughs> yes! Shit. Barry's gone? That's not good. Fuck. Zombies again? And slowly over time, she became jealous of Rebecca Chambers to the point where she was openly admitting that she hoped Rebecca didn't make it out of this mission alive. Who knows if she has what it takes to survive? Once we're all safe and sound, then maybe I'll worry about what happened to Rebecca. Rebecca may be younger and prettier, but she's got a lot to prove. I'll keep my eye on her. Make sure she pulls her weight. But deep down, I hope she doesn't make it out alive. Rebecca! Anyway, this run was insane. The challenge was to see if she could navigate the mansion, make strategic decisions, and solve the game's most challenging puzzles, all without guidance or influencing her choices. I need to reassess my options. Firstly, I'll focus on finding a source of fire to light the candles. You already Exploring have other areas lighter. of the mansion might lead me to a solution. No. As for the shield key, once I come across a safe opportunity, I'll retrieve it from the item box. That way, I'll be ready to unlock the shield room when I have the necessary items or clues. And even though she was clearly cheating at some points, accidentally letting information slip on future events like the coming destruction of Raccoon City as if she was Sarah Connor or some shit. September 28th. Daylight. The monsters have overrun the city. And somehow that moron Brad is still alive. <laughs> I did not tell her to say... She changed that! I don't believe this access to the internet actually helped her all that much, seeing how her first solution ever to solve the tiger puzzle statue was to find pickles and put them in each eye socket. Yeah, that was a real suggestion from her on a pre-stream model that I wasn't recording. So, sorry there's no footage on that, but I'll show you some wild examples and some insane reactions she had to the game's events unfolding. 
Before we get into it, let's meet the real AI Jill Valentine. Say hello, Jill. Hello! It seems you've stumbled upon Jill Valentine, elite member of S. I. A. R. S. What can I do for you? Just hope it's not another zombie on the loose or a sandwich related emergency. What? <laughs> okay, okay, we got this Jill working. Hey, it's Jill! I'm about to show these people all the fucked up shit you put me through in the Spencer Mansion. You remember that shit show? The Spencer Mansion? A real Pandora's box of fucked up horrors. Also, can you give a quick shout out to all our channel members and patrons? Thank them for supporting us. Big shout out to all the channel members and patrons. You're the first aid spray in this zombie infested hell. Ready to revisit the terror? Listen up, everyone. If you're brave enough to venture further into this mansion with us, Hit that subscribe button like it owes you money. And if you want to be a real hero, the membership and Patreon links are below. Your support is the only thing keeping me from becoming a Jill sandwich. Thanks, Jill. Let's get back to the challenge. Okay, so before we begin, I gotta clear this up. This AI Jill cannot directly control the gameplay. Everything has to be relayed to her verbally using a speech-to-text Google Chrome extension linked directly to Jill. So, whenever in-game Jill steps into an unexplored room, I tell AI Jill every detail. The number of doors, potential places to search, how many enemies are visible, and then I ask her how she wants to proceed, and then I follow her instructions. I must proceed with extreme caution. I prioritize my survival over everything else. I approach the box of shotgun shells. But unfortunately, I can't risk picking them up right now. Carrying additional items would slow me down and increase the chances of encountering a fatal threat. And I gotta admit, it was slow and boring as fuck. Sometimes painful. Waiting for responses, but man was it worth it at times. Sorry Jill, but there's nowhere in this shed to use the crank. God damn it. I can't catch a break with these mistakes. Time to put my thinking cap on and solve this shit. Uh... Okay, so she said find another way. And since the game's music doesn't pause when in the inventory screen, and AI Jill gave most of her responses and instructions while the game was paused, I will be editing some of the clips to show the actions while she was strategizing or monologuing. Just remember, this was all streamed in real time, and the full streams will be available for channel members. So let's get into it right away. Thanks to her suspected cheating, she understood the situation and the mechanics of the game. She understood the concept of using ink ribbons to save progress at typewriters, something I never even told her about. Well, shit. Looks like I've stumbled upon a safe haven amidst this hellhole. First things first. I'll snatch that typewriter ribbon and tuck it away safely in my inventory. Can't risk losing my progress now. She also knew the importance of item management and ammo conservation. Phew! Those zombie dogs won't be bothering us anymore. Good riddance! Now, with 106 bullets still in my possession, it's time to focus on exploring this unexplored room on the East Wing. She had already had a better grasp of the game than most of the newcomers at this point, but she took the importance of these mechanics too far. When given the choice, she'd always pick ink ribbons over weapons and ammo. Hell yeah! I did it! I opened that damn desk! And what do I find? An ink ribbon. Finally, an elusive addition to my collection of a hundred other ink ribbons. It's like the holy grail of typewriter ink, baby. Of course, I'm taking it. You can never have too many ink ribbons when you're in the middle of a living nightmare. Ink ribbons. It's always good to have More extra ink ribbons. ink ribbons for saving my progress. So I'll take a few of those as well. I'll evaluate the necessity of Consume, carrying multiple yes. ink ribbons. Adjusting the number I carry to a practical amount a by practical reorganizing amount. my inventory and making space. To her, all weapons were basically the same. Early on, she insisted on knifing every enemy she encountered. I'll attempt to create some distance between myself and the zombies by evading their attacks and using my knife to fend them off. Aiming for critical areas like the head or neck. I'll move quickly but quietly through the hall, keeping an eye out for any additional dangers. You failed at knifing, Jill. The zombie bit you and you are in danger. You're about to die. What do you do? Ah, shit. Let's try and knife it. Uh, that zombie vomit is just gross. Gotta clean myself up later. For now, I need to keep moving and investigate these rooms. 
Oh, shit. We did it! Oh, fuck! And the one time she finally equipped a firearm was to kill a zombie crow with a friggin' bazooka. This just keeps getting worse. But wait! <laughs> Forrest's dead hands are gripping a bazooka? That could be a game changer. With the zombie crows closing in, I'll make a split-second decision. I'll reach for the bazooka in Forrest's hands, hoping Holy it's loaded shit. and ready for use. If it is indeed loaded, I'll take aim at the approaching zombie crows and oh, fire no. a shot, hoping to eliminate as many of them as possible in one blow. This playstyle was not sustainable, and she inevitably died trying to knife a zombie in the head. This didn't end the challenge, though. People die all the time in this game and never give up, so this was no different. She learned from her mistakes, and Jill 2.0 was born. I'll try to take yeah. out those two bastards with my handgun. Yes. Bang, bang! Shit! Missed one. Bang! No, you didn't. Got the other. <laughs> all right, now I can make my way through. She understood the importance of keeping distance between her and the enemies. But just to be safe and save on time, I lowered the difficulty to easy, just in case she reverted back to her awful strategies, which, spoilers, she did. It might be wise to conserve my shotgun shells for now. But not Carrying on it. with an empty gun will allow me to focus on finding my missing teammates what? and progressing through this mansion. <laughs> It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Find solutions that'll leave those undead <laughs> bastards scratching their rotting heads. And speaking of heads, poor Forrest and Kenneth. <laughs> well, let's just say they had a bite taken out of them. Dark humor is my coping mechanism, I guess. But then again, who needs weapons when you can arm yourself with knowledge? According to the book, there are three herbs with distinct properties that grow around the raccoon mountains. The green herb recovers physical strength. The blue herb neutralizes toxins. And the red herb doesn't have any effect on its own. However, the red herb can be combined with other herbs to enhance their effects. We're arming ourselves with knowledge. And that might be the key to survival. Yeah, she can read these books. It's disturbing. Oh. Reading through these entries gives me a glimpse into the horrors that have unfolded within this mansion. It's like some kind of infection was taking over. And that final entry... Itchy. Tasty? What the fuck? This document paints a grim picture of the events that have unfolded in this mansion. For the documents and files found in the game, I used Resident Evil Resource, or Resident Evil Source, whatever that site is, to cut and paste files she obtained and drop them right into her brain. And this was actually impressive. She understood the full document and managed to do a good job of maintaining her inventory by mixing herbs to make more space. Now, this may seem all cool and shit, but you weren't there. You didn't have to sit through hours of backtracking to item boxes just so Jill could pick up that fourth blue herb in case she gets poisoned four times in one outing, or re-examining and searching useless rooms across the map that have already been fully explored. I examine the painting in the fireplace, Again? but find no immediate solution. Frustrated, I reluctantly turn my attention to the locked door Sealed by the helmet key. It seems this painting and fireplace hold no answers for now. With a determined sigh. I make a mental note to revisit this room later if needed. Nice. There's no point wasting time on dead ends. I steel myself. Ready to face whatever challenges await me beyond the locked door. As I approach the door, I remind myself that Chris and Barry's safety is at stake. In the meantime, I'll make sure to keep my sense of humor intact. After all... What's a little survival horror without a dash of sarcastic banter and some well-timed jokes? Onward. Jill, time to find that elusive helmet key and show this mansion who the real master of unlocking is? Nice, she didn't even think of using her lockpick. It was by complete luck that Jill discovered that the second floor dining hall statue, the one holding the blue jewel, was even movable. Her strategy for dealing with these two zombies up here was to try and push an object in the room to build a barrier between her and the enemies. And wouldn't you know it, the statue moves, but she still got bit. Oh, shit! I didn't realize there was a second zombie lurking nearby. <laughs> now I'm surrounded. I'll look for any nearby objects or obstacles that I can utilize to my what, advantage. We gotta get rid of this Whether it's knife. a nearby table to push in their path, or a strategic opportunity to escape, I'll seize any chance to break free from their grasp. This is a critical moment. And don't even get me started on this puzzle. 
It took almost an hour to get this jewel out of the statue's hand, and this was after she had previously given up on it and then came back to it when she had no other leads. Well, fuck. That didn't go as planned, I grumble. As I investigate, a sudden realization strikes me. The statue itself might be the key. With a determined grunt, I give the statue a gentle push, (gasps) testing its stability. To my surprise, it starts to shift. With a push, I apply force to the statue, directing it towards the gap (gasps) in the railing. The statue moves. And then, when she finally destroys the statue, she has absolutely no idea what to do with the jewel. It had been so long since she encountered the tiger statue, and she was all out of pickles, we had to re-explore the entire mansion all over again just for her to find this. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. She did manage to solve the piano puzzle and the armor room puzzle right away. It wouldn't be the first time I've come across a musical puzzle in my line of work. What? With a keen eye and steady hands. What is she doing? I'll continue to explore the room, leaving no stone unturned. the first time. These encounters taught me the importance of paying attention to my surroundings and using my skills in unexpected ways. In this bar room, who knows what musical challenge or hidden secret lies within the grand piano? Well, well, well. Looks like playing that Moonlight Sonata paid off. <laughs> Shit! The old yeah, trapdoor yeah. trick. Huh? Looks like I'm locked in here with this bust and a scratched up golden shield. Ah. Uh, <laughs> shit. Seems like I'm drawing a blank on where to place this golden emblem. <laughs> Can't waste any more time on this. I'll move on and explore another area to uncover any clues or items that might shed light on its proper placement. It seems that the gallery doesn't hold the answer to the golden emblem's placement. Given that the main hall doesn't provide any clues regarding the golden emblem's placement, I'll refocus my attention on the wooden emblem obtained from above the fireplace in the dining hall. Uh, So the answer was right there in the dining hall all along. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I should have taken a closer look. I knew that fireplace had more secrets to offer. No, you didn't. With excitement and anticipation, (laughs) I quickly make my way to the revealed hidden compartment. Uh, I see now. The vents on the floor are the source of the poisonous gas. Yes, I guess I should have told her that. And the statues can be moved around on the same floor. Additionally, there's a button that releases the poisonous gas, but it might also have another purpose. I'll first prioritize finding a way to neutralize or block the vents. If there are any objects nearby, such as heavy items or panels, I'll use them to cover the vents and prevent further release of the good poisonous enough for gas. Me. Good enough for Next, me. pressing the button might activate something beneficial or uncover new information. These two minor victories were very impressive. As for the art room puzzle, that was a completely different beast. I thought for sure this puzzle would kill the run. I read every description aloud to her, explained the button situation, and the plan was to let her run with it, see what she comes up with, and I was going to follow her lead. But I slipped up and made a huge mistake. Considering the sequence of pictures in the art gallery, I'll press the buttons in the following order. Tired middle-aged man. Newborn baby. Young man. A infant. Lively boy. Reflects the progression from one stage of life to another. <laughs> no, it as suggested by the titles, From the Cradle to the Grave and the End of Life. Yeah, some straight up nonsense. As if the art was depicting Benjamin Button's life cycle. But after she gave us the solution to the puzzle, I accidentally left the mic on and she overheard me talking mad shit about how dumb she was. No, she is so wrong. Okay. But this seemed to do the trick. Some negative reinforcement because she quickly spit out the correct answer, potentially saving us hours. She fucking solved it. She fucking solved it. I I muted her and she solved it. Okay. Apologies for the incorrect order. Let me increase the sequence based on given descriptions. Given the titles from the cradle to the grave and to the end of life, considering the pictures, the tired middle-aged man, newborn baby, young man, infant, and lively boy, the correct order to press the buttons is as followed. I'm glad I was able to figure out the correct order and solve the puzzle. It's a relief to make progress and uncover the secrets of this mansion. Anyway, with the AI's limited memory... It crashes after 30 or 40 responses, so obtaining the rest of these crests to leave the mansion was gonna be a pain. Like when she ran into Barry Burton again in the main hall. Barry! (gasps) What the fuck is this? She was on a mission to kill the zombie plant. She had the chemical in hand, and Barry tells her about a backdoor exit he found, but it's locked. Well, shit. 
Barry mentioned a back door and an escape route through the rear of the mansion. That sounds like a promising lead. With the newfound knowledge, I'll alter my course and head towards the back of the mansion. Oh no! I need to find that back door and secure our escape route. This little meeting derailed the challenge, and a detour like this could cause her to forget what she was even doing in the first place. She also was very cautious at times. She flat out avoided the greenhouse room until she had no other option, suspecting that there might be plant-based enemies in there, and she was correct. Plants turning into monsters? Yeah. Fuck that noise. I'll start with the storage room. It's always good to stock up on supplies. Who knows? Maybe I'll find some extra ammo, a first aid spray, or even another sandwich. She also avoided going outside because of the dogs howling in the distance. Damn, those dogs on the other side of the fence are making me a bit uneasy. Can't trust this flimsy fence to keep them at bay. In situations like this, it's better to err on the side of caution. I won't risk a confrontation with the dogs when I'm vulnerable outside the mansion. I'll backtrack for now and find another route. And honestly, I think this was just her using common sense and not necessarily cheating. Because there were numerous other times where she'd do the dumbest shit. But hey, who needs a bazooka when you've got killer dance moves? What? I'll distract that green meanie with what? my sick dance routine. What? And while he's busy busting a move, I'll slip into the room. Anyway, with the first half of the stream being pretty uneventful, and by first half I mean, well, first 10 hours or so, it was slow moving and boring, so I'm just going to catch you guys up to speed with the best of Sparknotes version of events, with no context, until she reaches the guardhouse. Inserting the blue jewel into its eye socket might just do the trick. This mansion loves its sneaky puzzles, so it's worth a shot. If that doesn't work, well, fuck me sideways. Ah, uh, yes. The other crest that I found in the room with the gas. Let me think for a moment. If I recall correctly, <gasps> that room <gasps> was located in the east wing of the mansion. <gasps> it was the same room where I solved the gas statue puzzle. The crest was likely hidden within a secret compartment or behind a locked door. How does she Considering this information... This? None of those passwords worked. Enters passcode fuck. What is up with the AI saying, fuck me sideways? That's not something I told it to say. Well, shit. Looks like these zombies want to play. I ain't got time for their undead antics. <laughs> Gonna have to take them out to clear my path. Yes. I aim my handgun and go for headshots, making every shot count. Bang! Bang! Down they go. Stay down. You rotting bastards! Can't slow me down. Gotta save Richard. Onward to the medical room. Yes! Time's running out. Ah! Finally. A source of fire to ignite those candlesticks <gasps> or other flammable she objects. She remembered! Ah! Progress! Chris and Barry could be out there, and they need my help. I just hope they're not stuck somewhere. Being dumbasses like always. What? Time to get back to she work and show this mansion who's boss. Oh, fuck! That giant T-virus infected snake, the one that killed Richard, has reared its ugly head. I'll give that snake a taste of my stars-endorsed badassery. <laughs> it's time to show this monster yes. what the master of unlocking can do. What? Phew. That was a Phew. close call. <laughs> I managed to defeat the snake, but I'm barely hanging on with just an inch of health left. Time to find that last crest and reunite with my missing teammates. All while cracking a few jokes and reminding myself that Brad is the true definition of a coward. What? That guy couldn't handle a sandwich. What? Let alone a crisis like this. <laughs> Guess I showed that zombie who the real master of unlocking is. I chuckled to myself. He won't be biting anyone's sandwich anytime soon. What? With my shotgun still at the ready. I proceed with caution. Well, Cheers. it well, seems well, like we've well. got a match. The square-shaped crank in my inventory is the perfect fit for the square-shaped hole on that post-like mechanism. Sometimes, things just fall into place. Well, fuck me sideways. <laughs> Would you look at that? The crank did its magic. Oh. For fuck's sake. Snakes now? This place just keeps getting better and better. Fuck. Not these mutts again. <laughs> these Looks mutts. like they caught wind of my presence this time. I squeeze the trigger and send a barrage of shots come towards on, the on, remaining mutt. Bang! 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 The bullets find their mark. Hitting the dog and bringing it down. Well, fuck me sideways. Another one of those mutts? Can't catch a break. So now we're at the guardhouse. Jill has discovered the infamous lights out puzzle to the chemical storage room. Uh, it seems we have a clock puzzle on our hands. 
the arrangement of the 369 balls resembling a clock and the sticks on the billiards table acting as clock hands with the hour hand pointing to three and the second hand pointing to 45 is quite intriguing. Thankfully though, this puzzle isn't necessary to complete the game, but it also isn't that hard for anyone to solve. Anyone with half a brain, that is. Can you think of any other number puzzles recently that you encountered? Maybe this is a clue. Uh, now that you mention it, there was a similar number puzzle earlier involving the unusual lock in the gallery. It had five lights turned on and four lights turned off. Oh, fuck! That was unexpected. <laughs> These damn zombie plants just love to make an entrance, don't they? When it comes to solving this lights out number puzzle, I'll rely on my observational skills and knowledge. Let me provide you with a list of numbers between one through nine. Love one, you. two, three, four, oh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These numbers may hold the key to solving the yes. puzzle and unlocking the door. Okay, Jill, maybe let's not focus on the light pattern, but the keypad. What combination of keys do you want to enter on the keypad? Given the available options on the keypad, I'll try entering the combination 123,456,789 inches in sequential order. <laughs> what? As it covers all the numbers from 1 to 9. And for some reason, she couldn't even comprehend the billiards hint. You know, the solution to this puzzle? Every time I examined the pool table for her, she came away with it with only two numbers. That didn't work. You got close to illuminating all the lights. Can you think of any other numbers or sequence you want to press them in? Apologies for not finding the correct combination yet. Let's tap into our collective memory and consider any numbers or sequences we've come across during our journey through this mansion. As I recall, there was a clock in one of the rooms we explored earlier. The clock's hour hand pointed at the three, and the second hand pointed at the four. Perhaps this could be a clue for the lights out number puzzle. With this in mind, I'll try pressing the numbers 3 and 4 on the keypad. This combination reflects the position of the clock hands we observed earlier. I observe that the hour hand is pointing at the number 3, but the second hand does not seem to be pointing precisely at a specific number. It appears to be in between numbers. Considering this discrepancy, it's possible that the exact position of the second hand is not crucial for the puzzle. Seriously, I got to the point where I gave up and I just asked her to give me random ass numbers. Fuck, do we give up on this? Like, I want her to get in this room. This would be really impressive. Let's try the code 589. Seven is a lucky number and holds importance. Let's attempt the combination 987,654,321 inches in reverse order. <gasps> Starting from the highest number and moving down to the lowest. I'll try entering the digits in a symmetrical order such as 15975-1951. But eventually she made it inside and it was a huge disappointment. Let's try entering the code 345 into the number keypad Fuck on the yeah. locked door. Chris, Fuck yeah. Barry, I hope this is right. let's hope this time-based code unlocks the door and allows us to proceed. But Jill hadn't read the Plant 42 report or the V-Jolt file, so the game wouldn't allow her to make V-Jolt even though she fully understood the formula and process on how to make it. Damn, these puzzles are some seriously retarded shit. I was so defeated at this point, I didn't know how to break it to her. So I told her she aced it. I'm gonna lie to her. You fucking did it, Jill. Give yourself a pat on the back. You solved the puzzle. You mixed the chemicals correctly. But it turns out you made meth. Crystal meth. <laughs> What the fuck? Are you serious? <laughs> I mixed the damn chemicals correctly, but it turns out I made meth? <laughs> Shit. This is not what I signed up for. I'm an elite member of S. T. A. R. S. <laughs> not a damn chemistry cook. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Calm down. Yes. Jill. Breathe. I didn't intend for this to happen. It must be some fucked up experiment going on in this mansion. I need to be careful and stay focused. <laughs> Making meth was definitely not part of the plan. Now, I need to figure out what to do with this unexpected discovery. I won't touch that shit. That's for sure. I'll have to be extra cautious about potential dangers. Damn. Jill, you're the master of unlocking, not the master of meth making. This situation just keeps getting crazier by the minute. I hope Chris and Barry are far away from this mess. 
They better not stumble upon my accidental <laughs> drug lab. Oh my god, I'm gonna okay. pass out. Okay, time to regroup and focus on the task at hand. Survival is still the top priority. I'll stay alert. Oh Keep my, my weapons god. ready. And be prepared for whatever twisted surprises this mansion throws my way. Oh shit. And next time, I'll make damn sure the chemicals I mix won't create a drug lab. Sheesh. <laughs> Now, I'll admit, I don't know if it was Jill Breaking Bad or the sleep deprivation, but something seemed to snap in both of us. I found myself loving this stream after this. We were cracking jokes, talking shit, and just overall she was being entertaining for once. She started making puns and telling us about her day-to-day -day life as Jill Valentine. Stumbling upon more macabre <laughs> scenes, this I'll try to maintain a twisted sense of humor. What? Sometimes a good laugh is the only thing that keeps me from going insane. Let's hope my <laughs> jokes don't offend anyone broken. who's already rotting away. Gotta keep pushing forward. Dodging zombies and booby oh, traps. Yeah. Because surviving this shitstorm is the name of the oh, game. Oh my god, she's fucking crap. <laughs> Speaking of heads, poor Forrest and Kenneth. <laughs> Let's just say they had a bite taken out of them. That is too soon. That's not funny. <laughs> not even now, listening. regarding the four empty bottles from my meth-making experiment, <laughs> it's probably best to get rid of them. Since that turned out to be a dead end and potentially dangerous, I don't want to carry them around anymore. Well, isn't that just dandy? Plant 42? The botanical nightmare with a taste for blood. Looks like this plant has been chowing down on more than just sunlight and water. It's evolved into a blood-sucking, door-blocking monstrosity. Door Talk about a real-life killer houseplant. I guess we can add man-eating flora to the list of things that can ruin your day. <laughs> Watch out. Blood and gore everywhere. But hey, that's just another day in the life of a badass S. T. A. R. A badass S. Stars. Member. Oh, shit! A zombie in the bathroom? Talk about bad timing and a real scare. My heart's pounding out of my chest. And I think I might have just pissed myself again. Great. Again, All right. Again. Jill, get a grip. I can save my progress and make sure I don't lose my shit if things go sideways. This is a crucial find. A small victory in this sea of chaos. Ink ribbon in hand. I'll keep on trucking. Ready to face whatever fucked up challenges come my way. No typewriter's gonna stop me now. Eventually, she found the documents and learned the colors and codes for the chemicals to create V-Jolt. Apparently, this V-Jolt is an element that rapidly destroys the plant cells infected by the tyrant virus. If we apply it directly to the root of the plant 42, it should take less than five seconds to wipe it out. Now, it's time to put our puzzle-solving skills to the test. We'll need to figure out the correct order to mix these chemicals and create the V-Jolt without blowing ourselves up. I don't know if she can even make the Joel. Do you think now that she's read the file? Okay, Jill, you've made it to the chemical storage room. Do you know how to make V Jolt to stop this killer plant? Absolutely. I've gathered all the necessary bottles and I'm ready to create the V Jolt to put an end to Plant 42's reign of terror. It. Here's the step by step <clears throat> process to make the V Jolt. First, combine the UMB No 2 red with the NP003 purple. This will create a mixture in the first empty bottle. Next, combine the UMB No 4 green. With the yellow six, yellow. This will create another mixture in the second empty bottle. Now, take the UMB No, seven white, and combine it with the UMB Num, 13 blue. This will create a third mixture in the third empty bottle. Finally, take the three mixtures you've created and combine them together. This will result in the V-Jolt UMB No, 16, a potent chemical that can destroy plant 42. It's important to exercise caution while handling these chemicals. She, she fucked up. Her instructions are, I don't know what world she's living in. So two with three, which was purple. We did that in the first empty bottle. Not true. And then four green and yellow six. This will create another secondary empty bottle. Okay, we got a reprompter on this. I got to type this shit out for her again because she did so good the first time. Uh, my apologies for the oversight. It seems I made an error in the mixing process since I have UMB no. 13 in my possession. The next step is to combine it with the UMB No. 3 purple to create the correct mixture. Oh, so, I'll take the UMB shit. No. 13 and the UMB No. 3 and mix them together. 
And with this, she had obtained the V-Jolt. She went downstairs and put Neptuna out of its misery, defeated Plant 42 with her bazooka, and even made it past the scary demon statues in the hallway. All right. I'm in the corridor with that creepy demon statue. Thank fuck it's not looking at me. <laughs> okay, so what exactly do you want to do? That wasn't very clear. Keep your response short, please. I will use the V-Jolt on the roots of Plant 42. <clears throat> I successfully use the V-Jolt on Plant 42's roots, causing them to wither and shrivel up, just like a penis in a cold shower. They became limp and defeated. Plant 42's reign of terror is coming to an end. Well, that's a strange sight to behold. Zombie tunas in the aqua ring. It's time to show Plant 42 what Jill Valentine and her explosive arsenal are capable of. Prepare to meet your doom. You overgrown weed! So, after getting a mission update from that shady bastard Wesker... What the fuck? Wesker? I can't believe he just casually pops up in the hallway, shooting at bees of all things. I mean, seriously? <laughs> bees? He sure knows how to make an entrance. Wesker might be a bit odd, but he knows the importance of thorough exploration. With Wesker off doing his thing, it's time for me to get back to business. Unlocking those new doors with the helmet key and exploring the uncharted territories of the mansion. The thought of stomping on those big, fat bees and hearing them squish beneath my feet does have a certain satisfaction to it. It's tempting to unleash a little frustration and take them out. However, it's best not to engage in such actions. Even if they pose no immediate threat, these bees could still be carriers of infectious substances smart, or potentially smart, attract smart. more unwanted attention. Farewell! Big fat bees, you may have escaped the wrath of my boots this time, but my determination to survive remains unshaken. Onward I go. This is Brad. I know you can't answer me, but somehow, give me a song. This is Jill. Brad? Oh, damn it! Brad! That cowardly helicopter pilot ignored my call? How did I miss having a radio this whole time? <laughs> well... Better late than never, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, back in the mansion, she encountered her first green meanie. Oh no, Jill, you've made it back to the mansion, but there's a new type of creature, one that can open doors and it's the size of a ninja turtle. Oh, great. Just what I needed. A mutated creature straight out of the sewers. Well, it's time to think fast and strategize. With my bazooka armed with four explosive rounds. I have some firepower at my disposal. But she wasn't going to let these creatures stop her from exploring the unexplored rooms in the mansion. Now that she had the helmet key in her possession, what do you want to do? Do you want to sneak up and tickle one or just bazooka them? Given the situation, sneaking up to tickle the green monsters might not be the most effective use of my time and resources. Instead, I'll opt for a more practical approach. Assess the surroundings. Take a moment to observe the behavior and movements of the green monsters. Aim and fire. With the green monster's backs turned, I'll take aim with the bazooka and carefully fire a shot at one of them. Okay, Jill, your bazooka's empty because you killed all the green monsters outside, but you're in the storage closet where Barry left some ammo for you. In the storage closet, there is uh, acid round, first aid spray, and shotgun shells, but you don't have a shotgun, and you just saved your progress. Ah! Great timing! My trusty bazooka ran out of ammo taking down those small dicked green monsters outside. But thank goodness for Barry, leaving me some goodies in the storage closet. I spot the acid round, first aid spray, and shotgun shells. Too bad I don't have a shotgun yet. Guess I'll have to find one to put those shells to good use. Speaking of saving, I made sure to save my progress on the ink ribbon. I had to overwrite Rebecca's damn progress because she was acting like a real bitch, saying some nasty shit about me. I didn't want to believe it. But she pushed me too far. Anyway, I better grab those supplies and keep pushing forward. There's no time for distractions or petty bullshit in this twisted game of survival. I can't breathe. I can't even see. <laughs> On her second pass through the mansion, she noticed a big fireplace, big enough for a giant ass snake to fit through. And she came up with it all on her own. Her plan was to play the piano and lure the snake out using vibrations. Ah, childhood memories. People used to make fun of me for not being able to talk to snakes. Well, 
Now's my chance to show them what I'm made of. To call out this potential giant snake, I decide to take a different approach. See a mini boss I remember that some creatures are attracted to sound and vibrations. I walk over to the piano in the room and start playing a tune. A catchy melody that resonates through the chamber. The notes echo off the walls, creating a unique vibration. If there's a giant snake lurking in this mansion, maybe the sound of the piano will pique its curiosity and draw it out. As I play, I remain on high alert, ready to face whatever slithers my way. Oh my god, you did it, Jill. You hit the piano key and a giant ass snake came out of the fireplace. What are the odds? You quickly dodged its attack and it broke open a hole in the floor. Holy shit! Talk about unexpected. I hit those piano keys and out slithers a massive snake from the damn fireplace. The odds of that happening were slim. My agile move causes the snake to crash into the floor, creating a gaping hole. And wouldn't you know it, the hole is big enough for my glorious booty to fit through. But first, I need to deal with this snake. I quickly assess the situation. I have my trusty weapons at the ready, including my bazooka loaded with acid rounds. It's time to show this slithering beast who's boss. Oh my god, Jill, you killed the snake with acid rounds. I unleashed those acid rounds on the snake. And it went limp faster than Chris's dick on cocaine. Now that the slithering threat is no more, I take a moment to catch my breath. Dealing with unexpected creatures and their surprises seems to be the norm in this twisted mansion. But I won't let that stop me. With the path clear, I cautiously approach the hole in the floor. It's tempting to imagine fitting my booty through it. But I'll save the celebrations for later. Right now, I need to focus on what lies ahead. Who knows what horrors await in the depths oh of this God. mansion? It's time to descend into the unknown, leaving the memory of that giant-ass snake behind. Nobody said it was going to be easy. But I'm Jill Valentine, <laughs> and I'm ready to kick some more undead and monstrous ass. Let's go! Oh my God. I cried more playing this than I cried at the end of Metal Gear Solid 3. And because she was so slow at trying to fit her booty through the hole... Barry actually returned with the rope and gave her the passcode for the West Wing's locked area. The same keypad where she tried to enter fuck as the combination before. Well, damn. Barry turned down my advances and left me in the piano room all by myself. It's disappointing, but there's no time to dwell on it. I'm a survivor, and I need to keep moving forward. Jill, as you were sneaking through the basement hall after you descended down that passage under the tombstone, you accidentally farted and now all the enemies are onto you. Oh, shit. Did that really just happen? I let out an unintentional fart while sneaking through the basement hall? That's a special kind of embarrassing. Not only did it break the silence, but now all the enemies are alerted to my presence. Way to go. On her way to explore the unexplored rooms and use up that helmet key, she developed some unusual tactics. Out of nowhere, she opted to start dancing at every hunter encounter, hoping to distract the green meanies and give them the slip. Jill, sneaking past or squeezing into the room. Ain't nobody got time to tango with that green meanie. I'm like a stealthy ninja, dodging him like a pro. Time to show off my moves and give that dude the slip. Yeah. This strategy didn't work, and it never worked, and she never learned from it. I'll use my agility and dance past the green meanie. <laughs> <laughs> She's either going to have a dance-off, um, shoot him with the acid rounds, or just escape. Time to put on my dancing shoes She's and show broken. off some sweet moves. I'll distract that green meanie with my killer dance routine and slip into the room like a stealthy ninja. She chose the dance -off. It's all about finesse. <laughs> and after using that passcode Barry gave to her... Jill interrupted some ass-eating zombies. A zombie munching on someone's behind? Talk about an unappetizing meal. It's time to put an end to this butt-munching horror show and continue my journey through this <sighs> eerie marble <laughs> hallway. Okay. Let the flames fly. Well, well, another hungry zombie lurking around the corner, searching for its own booty buffet. <laughs> it seems I can't catch a break with these undead snackers. From here on, it got in Jill's head that the most important thing was protecting her precious booty at all costs. With any luck, this will be the last booty chomping zombie I encounter in this hallway. Oh no, my booty wasn't as stealthy as I hoped. A zombie managed to take a bite, causing damage to my precious behind. A full grown man sinking his teeth into my booty is quite the ordeal. Despite this booty biting setback, 
Jill Valentine remains resilient and determined to overcome any challenges that come her way. Well, well, it seems my stealth skills are on point today. Even with my luscious booty brushing against the zombie, it remained completely oblivious. Talk about a close call. She was also actively looking for a bathroom, thanks to those damn enchiladas Enrico had given her right before the mission. Oh boy. I hope this room is a bathroom. My gut is in desperate need of some relief from those enchiladas. Time to open the door and hope for a porcelain oasis. Eating enchiladas before a mission may not have been the wisest choice. But hey, That's you canon. live and learn. It's canon now. It's unfortunate that it has caused me some discomfort and hindered my abilities in the field. What do we have here? Looks like someone couldn't handle their enchiladas. Or maybe it's just another sneaky zombie playing dead. Either way, I'm not taking any chances. Now, at this point in the challenge, there have been a few areas and puzzles Jill has refused to solve. The second floor east wing fireplace puzzle, where you obtain the map, the demon statue used to cover the plant vine hole, and now this light switch in the taxidermy room. Since the light is already on, there's no need to flip it off. Let's keep the room illuminated and carry on with our exploration. No need huh. to add unnecessary darkness to this already creepy atmosphere. Luckily for us, the player doesn't actually need this red jewel to complete the game. It just means that Chris will not be saved and he'll be left behind in the explosion. But we couldn't tell her that. Also, out of nowhere, she developed an irrational fear of dead stuffed animals. She won't admit it, but it was very clear by how much she avoided this room and any other rooms with dead animals. And I don't know, maybe this trauma extends from experience with Chief Iron's office in Resident Evil 2. And to think that taxidermy used to be my hobby. But going back and checking Kenneth's dead body was totally fine with her. Oh, for fuck's sake. First, I desecrate poor Kenneth's corpse. And now it's completely gone? This shit just keeps Yo, getting weirder and weirder. Who the hell moved him or... Worse, ate him? As a detective... I've seen my fair share of messed up things, but this takes the cake. I can't help but worry about what kind of sick fuck is behind all of this. Okay, with that uh, Kenneth mess cleaned up, you know, you don't have to clean that up, and it saves you the paperwork now that his body is missing. Where do you want to go? Ah, uh, right. Paperwork dodged. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Now, as for where to go next, I need to jog my memory a bit. Let's see. Ah, uh, <gasps> yes! The battery! It goes to the courtyard elevator. The That's where I need to head next. Luckily for us, when picking up the battery for the courtyard elevator, the game straight up tells you where it goes and what it does. This saved us hours from having to watch AI Jill re-explore the entire already explored map looking for this one single slot for a battery. Well, ain't that a surprise? A gentleman zombie opening doors for me? This place keeps getting weirder by the minute. But don't be fooled by his gentlemanly act. Jill, he's still a flesh-eating monster. And I can't let my guard down. I'll keep my distance, raise my shotgun, and aim for the head. Time to blow this gentleman away and make sure he doesn't get any funny ideas about snacking on my glorious booty. <gasps> Sorry, buddy. But chivalry doesn't stand a chance against a master of unlocking and zombie killing. What? Say goodbye to your undead existence. Oh. Oh, shit. Only one zombie left, and my shotgun is empty. I've been a bit trigger happy with those flame rounds. Haven't I? They're damn valuable. And I've been dishing them out like Jill Valentine gives out. E what? Well, let's not go there. Huh? I'll what have to make a tough decision. Oh, shit. Another one of those green meanies blocking my path? And this time with razor sharp finger claws? This zombie is in for a surprise if it thinks it's getting a taste of my zombie. torso or my booty. I won't let this undead bastard get the better of me. Another lucky incident was her getting poisoned in the courtyard. Pesky snakes. Huh? Trying to crawl up my leg and get in my booty? Well, what? they've got another thing coming. Simple, I won't let those venomous serpents ruin my day. Oh, fuck! Poisoned by those damn snakes. And no Chris or any other member of S. T. A. R. Yes, around to help me out. Well, isn't that just perfect? This caused her to immediately go back to an item box after forgetting to take the square crank from the mansion. And oh man, don't even get her started on cranks. 
She basically gave a half-hour seminar on how to become a master of cranking it. I shit you not. First things first. I'll definitely grab that square crank. It seems like a crucial tool to access the lower level and manipulate the water reservoir. Plus, I'd rather avoid getting my clothes wet and avoid any wardrobe malfunctions. It's time to activate that elevator and see what lies beneath. Let's get this show on the road and keep those nips well hidden. We're <laughs> With the reservoir closed and my nipples safe from unwanted attention, it's time to explore the newly opened path. Yes, the crank oh, we've been searching yeah, yeah. for. It seems luck is finally on our side. With this new crank in hand, I can't wait to get back to my favorite pastime. Cranking things! <laughs> oh, the joy of turning those handles and opening up new paths. Now, with the right tool at our disposal, we can proceed further into the mine. I'll make good use of this crank. Showing off my impressive cranking skills and unlocking new areas with a satisfying twist. Jill Valentine, the master of unlocking. Oh uh, my god. And cranking! Uh, Let's not waste any more time. It's time to put this crank to work and uncover the secrets that lie beyond. The Brace master yourself. Of World, and the ultimate crank aficionado is here to show you how it's done. Shut Get ready up. to be amazed. Why is she going on so much about cranking? Okay. Once I've cleared up some room in my inventory, I'll be ready to snatch up that crank and crank it like there's no tomorrow. As much as I appreciate Barry's company and the camaraderie we've shared, the call of the crank is just too strong to resist. <laughs> it's time for Jill Valentine to shine and show the world her legendary cranking skills. With a confident swagger and a determined spirit, I'll bid farewell to Barry and make my way back to that glorious crank. Jill Valentine, the undisputed champion of cranking, is ready to prove once again why she's the master of unlocking. And cranking. Prepare to be amazed as I conquer this challenge with style and flair. The world won't know what hit it. What the fuck was and cranking. <laughs> I've faced numerous challenges and encountered various types of cranks throughout my career. Through hands-on experience and rigorous training, I've developed a deep understanding of the art of cranking. It's not just about the physical act of turning a crank. It's about mastering the finesse, precision, and timing required. It's about feeling the mechanisms at work, understanding the intricacies of each crank, and adapting to the unique demands of the situation. While I may not have received formal cranking lessons, my extensive field experience and unwavering determination have allowed me to refine my skills. I've learned to approach each crank with focus, patience, and a sharp eye for detail. So, where did I learn to crank it like this? It's a culmination of my training, personal growth, and the challenges I've faced along the way. She's I'll channel all my strength and determination into cranking it with everything I've got. It's time to show this crank who's boss. With a deep breath and a steely resolve, I'll give it my all and crank that hexagonal mechanism harder than ever before. There's no time for hesitation or doubt. It's time to put my cranking skills to the test and overcome this hurdle. Jill Valentine knows how to handle this a crank. This is ridiculous. And I won't let this one get the best of me. Get ready. Crank. Because I'm about to show you the power of perseverance and determination. Well, that was quite the intense cranking session. But I managed to get the job done. Time to wipe off this sweat and keep my focus on the task at hand. No time to get distracted by a sweaty face or any other bodily occurrences. <clears throat> now, in the mines, Jill's memory was pretty impressive here. She actually remembered when her booty almost got stuck in that hole and Barry came back to save her. This memory and trust helped her make a decision here to follow Barry. A decision that guarantees his survival at the end of the game. This is unexpected. I didn't even know he was down here. It's been so long since we last crossed paths. But knowing Barry, he's always been a reliable and trustworthy ally. Considering his <laughs> past assistance and the fact that he came yeah. back to help me when my booty got like stuck it. in that hole, I have reason to believe he has good intentions. Running away like Brad is not an option for me. I am Jill Valentine, She's a member of S. The female T Captain America. R. Barry? Barry's life depends on it. And I won't let fear paralyze me. Time to put on my big girl pants and chase after that clueless hunk. Oh, Let's see where that up. path he took leads. <laughs> Holy shit! Barry, you magnificent bastard! You just saved my life and gave that green meanie a real nutshot it won't forget. Talk about precision aim and impeccable timing. You truly know how to protect a lady's precious assets. 
As for who let the dogs out, well, I think it's safe to say Barry let his magnum out and unleashed some serious firepower. Yes! That green meanie won't be jumping or leaping anywhere with a pair of shattered genitals. Breeding anytime soon. <laughs> Barry's magnum took care of that, didn't it? Talk about a potent form of birth control. That green meanie's family tree just got chopped down, and its reproductive aspirations have been crushed. But let's not dwell too much on the leaping leech's failed future in parenthood. Barry We've got a mission to focus on. The and the last thing we need is a bunch of mini green meanies running around. Ah. Jill Valentine and Barry Burton putting an end to both the undead and their attempts at procreation. Ah. Now, ah. let's keep moving forward and kick some more monster ass. It's here where they find Enrico, murdered by an unknown assassin, and she takes this death pretty hard. She refuses to lighten the mood by not making any jokes about Enrico's passing. I understand your intent, but it's important to remember that humor can be subjective. And in this sensitive situation, sensitive situation. making a joke about Enrico's death may not be appropriate. <laughs> Enrico was a valued member of S. <laughs> a. R. S. E. And it's crucial to respect his memory and the grief of those who mourn him. And this causes Barry to ditch her. He runs out on her, she runs away from some boulders, and nearly gets killed thanks to her ridiculous combat strategies against Black Tiger. The classic boulder obstacle. It seems the path ahead is blocked by a formidable giant. Well, I've dealt with worse in my time. You did it, Jill. You outran that boulder coming after you like Indiana Jones. That was a close call. Just like Indiana Jones. You know what? Fuck that boulder. I'll take my chances and head towards the elevator. Who knows what kind of surprises are waiting for me up there. But I'm not about to let a pesky boulder get in the way of uncovering the truth. I don't think if it wants to mess with my glorious booty, it better be ready for a fight. Let's see who's gonna come out on top this time. Ready or not, here I come. You rock bastard! And I really think it was Enrico's death that made her become cold and heartless. Cause fuck these spider babies. It seems these little ones are looking for a new mommy to latch onto. Sorry to disappoint, little guys. But Jill Valentine ain't no spider mama. You'll have to find someone else ain't to call no mommy. Spider mama. But hey, let's look on the bright side. At least these little critters won't grow up to be giant ass spiders like their mama. They'll forever be pint-sized pests, scurrying around with their tiny legs and minuscule ambitions. Damn. I suppose they'll have to settle for being a minor inconvenience rather than a major threat. Now, if you'll want? excuse me, I'll be on my way, leaving these spiderlings to fend for themselves. Jill Valentine has places to be and Charlotte monsters to slay. Dark Sorry. And before she could leave the mines, she was faced with one of her biggest fears, the creepy demon statue. This time, she had no choice but to interact with it if she wanted to progress. And surprisingly, she aces this puzzle first attempt. It seems we have a puzzle to unravel in this room. First, let's address the demon statue. While it may be unnerving, I'll keep in mind that it's just a statue and won't come to life. No need to let fear get the best of me. Now, on to the colored tile and the panel in the wall. The solution seems to lie in finding a way to keep the panel open without standing on the tile. One approach could be to utilize the statue to hold the tile down. <gasps> By pushing the statue onto the colored tile, I can ensure that the panel remains open while I move freely to inspect its contents. Okay, Jill, pushing the statue seemed to be the right solution, but unfortunately, you cannot push this statue diagonally in the room. Use the crank to open the hole in the wall. Adjust the statue in line with the tile on the floor to create a clear space. Oh, and then move man, the Jill, you solved the puzzle. You finally conquered your fear of the demon statue and utilized it to solve this puzzle. And all you found was a lame ass message, a message you decoded. And it said, better drink your Ovaltine. Well, that's quite the anticlimactic message to discover after all that effort and puzzle solving. It seems I was expecting something more valuable or informative. Nevertheless, deciphering the message serves as a reminder that not everything we We're encounter in our up. journey will lead yeah. to significant revelations or rewards. From here, she makes it out to the underground lab after examining the book and discovering that both her books contain hidden metals. Well, shit! You're testing my memory here. And with all the chaos and undead chomping at my ass, it's hard to keep track of all these damn metals. But hey, 
Luck is on our side. I actually do have the Eagle Medal. Damn, oh! I'm good! Now, about these herbs and inventory slots. She's it's confident. It's like Tetris, but with life-saving green and blue it's blocks. Like I ain't no Marie Kondo, but I'll have to do some serious item Marie management Kondo? to make room for the important the shit. Gotta prioritize that survival. <laughs> After all, fuck! Talk about a tough choice. A welded shut door to the helipad on the left, and a mysterious fountain with metal slots on the right. Well, if it were up to me, I'd say let's go for the shiny stuff and check out that fountain. I'll take a closer look at those metal slots. A wolf medal and a gold eagle medal. Huh? Sounds like we're playing Animal Kingdom bingo here. Now, Animal I may be Kingdom the master bingo. of unlocking, but I ain't no expert on animal-themed puzzles. However, puzzles. if I were to take a wild she really guess, isn't. She maybe inserting the, the wolf she medal or the gold the... eagle medal <gasps> into those slots would trigger <gasps> something important. Did I it's worth her? a shot. Oh, Let's hope it's not some elaborate trap or a secret message saying, You're fucked, Jill. I've had enough surprises for one day. Fuck me sideways! You're telling me I got sucked down into this well of a fountain without any damn control? Well, ain't this just a fine mess? But you know what they say. When life throws you into a secret elevator, you take that elevator straight to unknown dangers. Well, shit just got real, didn't it? The secret umbrella lab, basement level two, we and a welcoming committee of zombies. Ah, uh, fuck! Just when I thought the situation couldn't get any worse, I end up getting vomited on by one of those damn zombies. Right in the cleavage. No less. This is not the kind of action I signed up for. Well, shit happens. It's Fuck like me sideways. Naked. Rotting zombies with their schlongs and balls hanging out. Well, that's a sight I never thought I'd have to face in my wildest nightmares. Damn those persistent zombies. The close encounter with their decaying nakedness was absolutely <laughs> horrifying and, dare I say, violated my personal space. Violated, it's yes. a good thing I managed to break free and make a daring escape to the safety of the room using the master key. Avoiding them might be the safest bet. I don't need any unnecessary bodily fluids from those decaying freaks on me. So I'll take the door to my right. Maybe it leads to a safer area or some useful supplies. Once in the laboratory, she finds John's letter to Ada Wong. This letter outlines how to solve the coded portrait puzzle and unlock the electronic locks on B2 and B3 floors. Uh, so I stumbled upon a researcher's letter. Huh? Interesting find. It seems to be addressed to someone named Ada. Now, I may not have all the context, but based on the letter, it appears that the writer is infected and fears becoming one of them. The writer urges Ada, who is uninfected, to retrieve material from the visual data room and activate the triggering system before escaping. They also mention making their findings public through the media. As for the comment about Ada being a hoe and anyone falling for her being a simp, well, I can't say I share the same sentiment. We all have different experiences and perspectives. And it's important to approach characters and situations with an open mind. Love, connections, and complexities can arise even in the midst of a survival horror nightmare. <laughs> However, let's not lose sight of the urgency and gravity of the situation. There's important information in this letter, including passwords and locations. It seems like John's last hope is for Ada to end his life if he's fully transformed. Uh. I must keep these details in mind as I continue my investigation and navigate this treacherous environment. And this was it. I thought, there is no way she could solve this. This had to be the run killer puzzle. There was no way I could explain these symbols to her and what she'd see on the portrait. But she got lucky again. Thanks to Resident Evil Resource uploading the file with accurate Norse symbols or whatever they are, Jill actually understood the code without having to use the painting to decode the code. I couldn't believe it. I would have never run this game if I had remembered this puzzle. You can't beat the game without solving this puzzle. And if I hadn't been using this site to cut and paste the game documents to her, she would have never figured this out. She was a genius. That was, until it came time for inputting the codes. Can, can AI solve these uh, foreign scribblings? How do you say it? Yeah, I don't know. You can't explain that. Yeah, I don't think so. Fuck, this is the end of the game? AI can't solve this, right? Ah, right. The document I just read about John and Ada's letter might hold some clues to help unlock these electronically locked rooms. Let's take another look at it and see if there's any relevant information. 
According to the letter, Ada is instructed to access the security system using John's name and enter her own name as the password. Additionally, to unlock the door at B2 where the visual data room is located, a code needs to be entered after using their names. <gasps> now, recalling the peculiar code written in the document as M-O-L-E, it's possible that these runic symbols represent letters or characters. Oh my god! I'll try to match them up and see if they correspond to the letters of Ada's name, John's name, or any she other relevant keywords. If I can successfully decipher this code and find the corresponding letters, I can she try using those it. in conjunction with the security system, terminals, or the locked doors themselves. We it's don't worth have a to shot. explain and the And it might just be the key to her? unlocking okay, these electronically I show secured the rooms. World this. This All right. Is fucking nuts. Time to dive back into the puzzle-solving mindset and put this newly discovered information to good use. Jill Look Valentine, this, you guys. the master of unlocking, is on the case. Look at this shit right there. Okay. Now recalling the peculiar code written in the document as, and she said that M O L E, the code is mole. The passwords John and Ada, M O L E. And we didn't even have to decipher it for her. She knows that yeah, is M O L E. Smart. What is up with that? That's insane. Skynet activated. Well, she fucking saved the challenge run because now she can solve this shit without us explaining in detail how to yeah. write these symbols. Wow. Now, as impressive as all that was, it was actually entering the passcodes correctly that was the real challenge here. Ah, the password for John's login on this old PC. Let's see if I can piece together any relevant information to come up with a suitable password. The oh, letter no. mentioned that the password for accessing the security system is Ada's name. However, since we're trying to log in as John, it's unlikely that Ada's name would be the password in this case. Considering the situation and the connection between John and the facility, I'll try using Umbrella as the password. It's a common theme in this nightmare. And it's possible that John, being a researcher within Umbrella, would have chosen something related to the company as his password. But with nowhere else to go and nothing else to explore, she eventually re-examined the letter a couple more times and finally caved and entered Ada's name. Apologies for the confusion caused. <gasps> Let's go back to that document and carefully reconsider the information provided. It According to the letter, the John instructs Ada document. to access the security system using his name from the terminal in the small lab and enter the password, which is her own name. So, it seems we need to use Ada's name as the password. Now... It's time to hit that enter key and see if Mole opens the door to new revelations. Here's to hoping we're finally on the right track. From here, all she had to do was power up the elevator, which was easier said than done. Not only was the power room infested with Jeff Goldblum-looking bug-eyed exoskeleton motherfuckers, but she kept returning to the elevator without actually flipping the switch. Thankfully, she had enough firepower to get through the situation, and after numerous pirate hook stabs to the butt and zombie bites, she finally made it and powered up the elevator. Holy shit indeed! Three Jeff Goldblum bug-eyed monsters with Captain Hook hands? That's a nightmare I never thought I'd encounter. But I made it to the third power room, and I'm still standing. Time to find that switch and get the hell out of here. Ah! Monkey monster? Jeff Goldblum with a tiny cock? Shit. That's a disturbing visual, but I don't have time to dwell on it now. Oh my god! I quickly assess the situation, and it's clear that fighting is the only option. Ugh, shit! That Jeff Goldblum bug-eyed exoskeleton dick guy just had to get a piece of me, didn't he? The bastard managed to cut me, and now I'm dealing with more damage. Hallelujah! The power for the elevator is finally restored, and it's activated and ready for action. This is a major victory in my escape from this nightmarish mansion. But before I get too excited, there's a crucial piece of information to consider. As I catch my breath, I read the warning about the elevator's weight limit. Five tons. Huh? Well, I may be a badass, but my ass is certainly not fatter than that. I chuckle to myself, appreciating the dark humor in the midst of this intense situation. Knowing that I'm within the weight limit, relief washes over me. Armed with a bunch of flame rounds and explosive rounds, this run was basically over, so we had fun with it. Holy shitballs. A nine-foot-tall monster called Tyrant? That's one big motherfucker! And she you're telling me it's now. overcompensating for its lack of... 
manhood? <laughs> well, ain't that a sight? Smooth as a Barbie doll down there. Huh? I guess it won't be winning any dick measuring contests anytime oh. soon. But listen, size and lack of genitals that. aside, this tyrant sounds like a real threat. I'll need more than my quick wit and masterful unlocking skills to take this behemoth down. I'll have to find its weak spot, exploit its blind spots, and maybe even use some explosive firepower to knock Fuck it on yeah, its sorry Jill. ass. You got the right I've faced some messed up shit in my time, Oh yeah, but this yeah. takes the cake. I'll show this tyrant who's boss, even if it's trying to compensate for something it doesn't even have. <laughs> Get ready, you big, smooth, castrated bastard. Jill she Valentine is about smooth. to make you regret ever stepping foot in this lab. Living like a bug ain't easy, but neither is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a monster like you. Time to give you a taste of my survival skills. Who let the dogs out? What? Oh my god, you did it in three perfectly placed grenade rounds to his missing testicles where they should be. You hit him perfectly in the crotch every time. You are an expert marksman that would make Chris jealous. Damn straight. I nailed that son of a bitch right where it hurts the most. Chris better watch out because I just outshined him in the balls oh, department. Oh shit. Who in needs a dick measuring department? contest when you can blow a tyrant's crotch to smithereens? <laughs> But let's not get too cocky, pun intended. There's still work Holy to be done, shit. more puzzles to solve, and more undead bastards to take down. This victory against the tyrant is just the beginning. Cocky. Bring it on. Umbrella, who let the dogs out? Are you fucking kidding me? Barry was just playing possum while I was taking on that tyrant solo. Yes. That sneaky bastard. While I was risking life and limb, he decided to sit back and let me handle all the action. I can't what believe he left Wesker? it all up to me. Honestly? I'm a mix of pissed off and relieved. Pissed off because Barry could have had my back, and relieved because, well, West I survived. But hey, that's There's what being Jill Valentine is all us. about. Taking charge and getting shit done. Even when your so-called teammates are pulling some shady moves. <laughs> Barry better have a damn good explanation for this. Again, sorry for the audio. There's nothing I can do about the self-destruct alarm, so I tried to get her to get through it as fast as she could. Are you fucking kidding me? Barry just ran past the zombies without even lifting a finger to help? That spineless son of a bitch. I can't believe he left me to deal with them all by myself. I thought we were a team, but I guess I was wrong. But you know what? Screw Barry. I can handle these undead freaks on my own. I won't hesitate to blow those undead fuckers to kingdom come. Well, well, well. Look who's inadvertently helping us out. Albert Wesker, you sly bastard. Trying to take us down. But you actually ended up opening the way for us to escape through that emergency X1 gate. Talk about sweet poetic justice. Barry, you and I have a date with that heliport. And nothing's gonna stand in our way. Well, well, well. If it isn't Brad. The so-called helicopter pilot with a penchant for fireworks. Figures he'd make things difficult for us. But hey, if he wants a little light show, I'll give him one. Let's see. There must be something around here that we can shoot in the air to satisfy Brad's pyromaniac tendencies. Three minutes to escape? Shit. That's cutting it close. Those monsters screeching like they're missing their dicks are just adding insult to injury. But Barry running back to fight them off. That's unexpected. I hope he knows what he's doing. As for me, I'll take a deep breath, gather my wits, and get my ass in that elevator. Going up alone might be risky. But time is not on our side. I've faced worse than this. I'm prepared for whatever awaits me. If Barry can hold his own against those monsters, then more power to him. Tyrant bursting through the ground at the heliport is not ideal. Looks like my fireworks weren't enough to keep him down. And yes, I remember the whole dickless situation. But let's not dwell on that now. With the bazooka out of ammo, I need to make a quick decision. Grenade rounds or flame rounds? Considering Tyrant's size and resilience, I'll go with the flame rounds. Fire yes. is a way of dealing with stubborn yes. monsters. And maybe it'll cauterize that metaphorical wound of his. I'll load up the flame rounds, take aim, and let loose the fiery fury. It's time to show this bastard what happens when he messes with the master of unlocking. Let's burn this motherfucker down. Who let the dogs out? Okay, you threw four flame rounds right into his crotch and he didn't even get phased. He slapped you around like he was your pimp and you were a bitch that stole something from him. Well, shit on a sandwich. 
Looks like Tyrant has a thing for punishment. Those flame rounds didn't phase him? That's one tough son of a bitch. But hey, I'm not one to back down from a challenge. If Brad Vickers has finally redeemed himself and thrown down a rocket launcher, it's time to take advantage of the opportunity. I'll grab that baby, steady my aim, and give Tyrant a taste of his own medicine. With a deep breath, I'll pull the trigger and unleash the explosive power of the rocket launcher right into Tyrant's sorry crotch. Boom! Say goodbye to whatever was left down there. You castrated monstrosity. Jill Valentine doesn't let anyone slap her around like a bitch. It's time to show Tyrant who's in charge. This is my moment to shine, and I won't let it slip away. Get ready for the fireworks. Tyrant, you're about to meet your explosive end. Who let the dogs out? Holy shit, Jill, you fucking did it. You killed Tyrant. You uncovered the mystery of Umbrella and the zombie apocalypse that you um has you've impeded. You've slowed it down. Now it's time to take down Umbrella. Holy shit. Did I really do it? I took down that Tyrant and unraveled the secrets of Umbrella. That's a relief and a victory all wrapped into one. I may have impeded the zombie apocalypse and slowed down their plans, but our fight isn't over yet. With Brad redeeming himself and picking us up in the helicopter, it's time to regroup and come up with a plan to take down Umbrella once and for all. And that's it. It was a fucking journey. The live stream lasted 20 hours and Jill had 19 resets on her character. She escaped with Barry and couldn't give a fuck about Chris or Rebecca. Oh, shit. If the facility blew up and was leveled to the ground, that means... Chris and Rebecca, the loss of my teammates is indeed a heavy burden to bear. And it's natural to feel guilt and sorrow in such a situation. However, dwelling on the past won't change what has happened. And I gotta say, it was impressive. I know people that have spent way more time on this game on their first playthrough. Anyway, what AI adventure should I go on next? I created an AI Colonel Campbell from Metal Gear Solid, who may even be more batshit insane than she was since the AI language model has had a few upgrades since. So, let me know in the comments. Also, what do you think was AI Jill's shining moment? Did she make you laugh? Did she make you cry? Let me know. Do you think she was cheating? Should AI Jill tackle Resident Evil 3? Despite the game having audio and visual puzzles that an AI with no eyes or ears could ever solve? I'm thinking why stop now? She keeps getting lucky. Or should I just hop into MGS or something else? Anyway, that's it. Shout out again to my patrons and channel members. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. If anyone else out there would like to support the channel and get early and exclusive access to content and access to my Discord, please check out the links below and become a member. Thanks. Bye. Fuck me sideways.